Okay, well, I'm going to read a, a prayer for us about God's protection. And here's a few scripture readings uh, uh, from Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the most famous prophets in the Bible. And uh, he's prophesying just round numbers, 700 B.C., but you are familiar with some of his stuff about Christmas and that sort of thing, or the Isaiah prophecies. Uh, he lived in a tumultuous time, a time when um, Assyria is going to come and annihilate 10 of the 12 tribes, the, the tribes of Israel, uh, Judah, the two tribes that are left will survive. That's during uh, Isaiah's uh, the period of life. Uh, at any rate, the Bible readings today come from Isaiah. <clears throat> These are about protection. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is Isaiah 54, 17, by the way. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. And Isaiah 41, 13 says, I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. We praise you for being our protector every day, O Lord. Thank you for all the times you have protected us from death and disaster in the past, and especially those times when we weren't even aware of it. Thank you for surrounding us like a shield. Thank you for setting us in the safety for which we yearn. Thank you that we don't have to be afraid of the dangers that are all around us night and day. Thank you, thank you for giving us your angels charge over us to protect us. You are our refuge in the day of trouble. In Jesus' name we pray, and we pray also for those mentioned here, O Lord, for those uh, not only of our church that might be sick or suffering or having difficulty of various kinds, but for the town, for our state, for our nation, for our world, O oh Lord, our world, a world troubled by so many difficult things. So, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, this is a take advantage of the free booklets and books that are out in the narthex. Uh, they've been resupplied. There's probably 10 or 11 out there, including a couple Bibles. I apologize, those Bibles have the, the words are kind of tiny for those of us that are. But nonetheless, there are Bibles there for you to get. And this is one of them. This is, I don't know this particular one, but it might be out there as well. But they're, they're wonderful. I've read many of them. I haven't ever found one that wasn't. Uh, uh, a great thing. So check it from time to time uh, as well. Uh, all of you, I hope, have been given this booklet called Angels. These are wonderful booklets. I've used them in the past. Uh, if you were part of the Sermon on the Mount series that we did last year, you will remember these Life Guide uh, booklets that uh, help us a lot. Uh, to get through. Uh, they're really well designed for people like us. Uh, easier to understand, yet 
with in depth enough information and biblical uh, information that uh, they're they're really rewarding to to use and to have. Let me just show you a couple things uh, about the booklet so that you might use it. Believe it or not, whether you're an educator like I was in 44 years at Wyoming Seminary, you always had a textbook, right? So you got your history book. I was an ancient and medieval teacher for, at, at Wyoming Seminary for 44 years. So you get Mr. Swanson's textbook, okay? Thrilled to death, no doubt, in getting your history textbook. But textbooks, study guides, booklets are all written with a design and a purpose for use, okay? It's not just, you know, read these pages and answer these questions and that's it, okay? So if you think back to your textbooks, there's always a glossary in the back, right? A, a, a table of contents in the front, you know, and that sort of thing. Well, likewise, your, your booklet has all sorts of information, too. Uh, in just a little bit, if you turn to page five and six of your booklet, uh, right in the front, it'll look like that. Getting the most out of angels, okay? It's an introduction. We're actually going to read a little bit of that uh, ourselves here. Suggestions for individual study and group study on pages 6 and 7. And then you get to the actual lessons. There are eight lessons in this booklet, in the study guide. Uh, this, the first one will be Burning in God's Presence. It'll have a little introduction. Everyone is going to be like this. It'll have questions. I'm on page 10 and 11 now, and 12, and it ends on page 12. That's your homework assignment class. I don't want to hear any excuses about the dog ate it or <laughs> whatever excuse you used to use when you were back in school, okay? But next week, that's the lesson we're going to be doing. Okay, so you might want to look it over. It won't take you long to do that. Uh, and there are questions to think about and to answer. Now, when I was a teacher, I would tell the kids, there's a test on Tuesday. Wonder if Mr. Swanson said to you, students, that I'm going to give you the answers ahead of time on a sheet of paper. What would you do with it? What would you do with it? Elliot, what would you do with that? Read it. <laughs> Boy, I mean, would you be nuts if you didn't like, Whoa, the test is coming, here are the answers. Why, boom, 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 right? Take a look at, let's go to page 48. Page 48, what do you see there? <coughs> the answers. <laughs> so avail yourself to that little piece of information. You're reading the question, you're going, I really don't know what to do with that, just to move on to question number two. No, 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 no. Go back and take a look and see what the people who designed this study guide are saying about the answer to the book, okay? And so, there you are. These things are designed uh, well for your use, okay? So the plan is to do one lesson a month. Lesson one will start, uh, uh, did I say a month? One lesson a week, <laughs> not one lesson a month, one lesson a week. Um, and lesson one will be due next week, and so that is the plan. <clears throat> so, angels. Let's ask a couple questions about them. See a show of hands. How many believe in angels? Angels. 
Yes. What do you know about them? What's that? They're always with us. Uh, they're certainly around and about. You think you've ever met one? I think I've met someone. Jack? Who else? Yeah? Met one? More than one. Many. Did you know it? I think we're all kind of angels in somebody else's life. That's interesting. What, what, say that again now. I think that, like, when I think of angels, I, I don't think of heavenly angels a lot of times. I think of more earthly angels and that people come into our lives for a reason and they can be like, oh, okay, thank you, and not even know it. So can God use you to help others in what we think of as an angelic way, like a servant? Yeah. You know, angels are uh, servants and messengers. Can you think of in the, in the Bible story when an angel was a messenger? One of the most famous parts of the Bible. Mary. Mary, yeah. Jesus being born, right? The announcing. John the Baptist, the same. Right? An angel announces. What about Jesus' tomb? Angels? Yeah. Yeah. This is a little deeper question. I was going to save it for later, but might as well throw it out there now. If these creatures called angels are so prevalent, many of you said you think you've come across them, maybe come across even lots of them in the course of your life you didn't even know about, okay. Why don't we, why isn't like, there's the whole book maybe in the Bible that just says angels, and it tells you all about them, right, every detail. Why? They're so important. They're doing God's work. They're servants of God. They're messengers of God. Why isn't there like an angel book? Then we could do the angel book and then the gospels and then Paul's stuff and all that. It's, it's kind of here and there, isn't it, in the Bible? Why? Yeah. <laughs> no book about Paul. I mean, it's here and there. It's here and there. <laughs> Mostly in Acts. There are too many of them. There are too many of them. Hey, how many of them are there? A zillion. <laughs> Look, it, it, you know, we've all experienced somebody that we felt is an angel to us, I'm sure. We can't enumerate them all. So, do we need... I mean, obviously, they, we need to, to have it part of our Bible reading, don't we? That, that you know, angels appeared to Mary, and, and there are angels appear at the tomb. Or uh, think about uh, Abraham. What, what's, what, what's appearing to Abraham? Remember the three people that appear to Abraham and Mary? And remember Mary laughs when they say they're gonna, she's going to have a baby? Yeah. I think God God knows what he's doing. If you made angels really prevalent, like among the top two or three things in the whole Bible that, you know, there was a whole section of the Bible about angels and so on. Where would angels rank in we humans' mind? Like God. Like God. They're not God. Okay? They're like you and me. Here's an interesting question. Where would we, we humans, rank?
compared to angels. Above them, same, below them. Depends on our actions. Why is that? Because we're not perfect. <laughs> and yet, there are times when people come into our lives who are also not perfect, but they do something for us or help us in some way. That for us, they're an angel. Right. Yes. So they had, I mean, in the Bible, they, were, they all had a specific purpose. They had Mary was the child that was intent. Yep. So I think that I wouldn't rank that. I could go either way about that. But I think that we, I think it's our spirit that tells us to do things for others. I think it's the Holy Spirit. I'm not so sure that it's an angel. I know I'm going to have to find that. But I think our Holy Spirit tells us go here, go there. Revelation. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they also fell, obviously, if they went out of heaven. But I think that. So sin, <coughs> like it is for us, exists, right? Uh, what the Bible refers to in that reading, a, a third, along with Satan, who is probably a cherubim, maybe the most beautiful. Uh, is vain, right? Wants to be God. That's the problem. And, uh, and it, uh, what it says is a third of the angels go with them. The thing is, the angels that we read about in the Bible, it seems to me like they appear out of nowhere and disappear. Maybe I'm yeah. reading that into it. So the angels, compared to you and me, are here. They seem to have intelligence way beyond ours, abilities way beyond ours. So they're here and we're here. We die, go to heaven. Where are we? What would you say? Above? That's a home run. It is. You're above the angels. Right now you're not. But they are beings. They do exist. How about this question? You have a guardian angel. I was thinking probably if you stand in the book of that book, that would be it. Sometimes I think of my parents, who are now deceased, and my brother. I have, I've lost him as well. And I kind of think of them a little bit like that, like, you know, hey, you guys, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Maybe you could help me here a little bit. Or, you know, that's kind of thinking about them. Or, well, there's another question besides, do you believe in guardian angels? Will you be an angel? Or I be an angel? Or are my parents angels? Or my brother an angel? Do you become, do humans become angels? What's your guess? No. You are a creation of your own, we humans. Okay. Created in the image of God. That's you. I said this to the uh, men at the on Wednesday's lunch we did it we just had. Okay. How much does God love you? If you think about how much you love 
your family, or if you have children or you love your children, love your husband, love your friends, love any of those people, right? It's like a speck of sand on the beach compared to how much God loves you. I can't even fathom that. Right? But that's true. Well, getting back to your point about do you have a, a guardian angel and and you were suggesting, I believe, if I'm remembering your statement right, Amanda, what is that could we be angels or act as angels sometimes? <clears throat> See, God can use you, right? Isn't that what we pray for in this church? We pray for the, every, every Sunday school class we pray for that God will use this church, right? A beacon on the hill. Remember, we've said that a zillion times in church. We say it every time in our, in our adult class, that, that God make this church a beacon on the hill, right? God uses you. So, so you can serve the function of being a messenger, being a servant. That's what, that's what angels are, messengers and servants, right? And so you can be that. So when you were helping out with the ice cream down there, it's kind of an angelic thing to do, isn't it? You were caring for people, you were, you were helping out and providing uh, something wonderful that the church was trying to do for people, right? It's sort of like an angelic kind of thing. That, that you were doing. Guardian angels. So is there a Tim angel that's looking after me every second of the day? Or is that the Holy Spirit? Think about it. Yes, there are zillions of angels. I don't have a, an exact answer for you, but the truth is there's, there's nothing scripturally that says there is a guardian angel, there's a Phil angel that's looking out after you. That's God doing that. That's the Holy Spirit doing that. And yes, he's looking out after you, but I'm not sure there's a there's a Tim guardian angel. I don't say so I don't have a final answer for you. I'm on the side of that's God doing that. God's work. There's a guardian angel. So <clears throat> over the course of the summer your faithful uh, teacher <laughs> has been reading. I, I, I hope to offer to you uh, uh, in the winter and the spring uh, an end times theme to, to, to teach about that, okay? And I've read now uh, three books on that um, and so I'm working on it. I think Pastor Nicky is going to be preaching on some revelation material in January as well. So I would say to you, it is my hope and prayer that in January I will be doing uh, an end times, starting an end times series that will run for, the, for winter and into spring time but this is an interesting book I'm just reading now called Imagine Heaven In, you can th this I, I get my materials like this and so does your study guide it comes from christianbooks.com okay. 
you can belong to christianbooks.com it costs five bucks and you'll start getting these pamphlets and booklets you get stuff at a reduced rate uh, uh, you're welcome to look at that after class if you'd like but I'm reading this one now it's called imagine heaven and it's about near death experiences oh my gosh by John Burke there are at least a hundred stories of near-death experiences in here okay and um, it's amazing. I think John Burke is probably the world's. He's probably hundreds, if perhaps several thousand stories he's examined and, and gone through about it. But it's the kind of thing you can make yourself available or, or see me uh, that the Bible student Rich Lavador wants me to get him one of these books. So he gave me his name on a sticker. I put it right here so I'll remember. <laughs> I'll remember to do that <clears throat> but likewise if you're interested in angels <clears throat> how many know who David Jeremiah is a few of you okay it's on TV a lot if you look on Sunday afternoons or or Sunday evenings channel it, it's the channel out of Allentown and Bethlehem whatever that one is Okay, we'll run like from 8 to 10 a series. David Jeremiah is, is one of them, and he has this book uh, called Angels. So I would like to um, read to you a couple things, and then we're going to read something from our, our, our study guide uh, about angels from David Jeremiah's book. Scripture gives information about angels. Um, let me, where shall I pick this up here? This story. This is about a missionary whose name was John Patton in the New Hebrides Islands in the South Pacific. Hostile natives surrounded his mission headquarters one night, intent on burning the Pattons out and killing them. John Patton and his wife prayed all during that terror-filled night that God would deliver them. When daylight came, they were amazed to see that unaccountably the attackers, the attackers had left. They thanked God for delivering them. A year later, the chief of the tribe was converted to Jesus Christ. And Mr. Patton, remembering what had happened, asked the chief what had kept him and his men from burning down the house and killing them. The chief replied in surprise, Who were all those men you had with you there? The missionary answered, There were no men there, just my wife and I. The chief argued that they had seen many men standing guard, hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands. They seemed to circle the mission station so that the natives were afraid to attack. Only then did Mr. Patton realize that God had sent his angels to protect them. The chief agreed that there was no other explanation. An interesting story. Here's another one. One of the most popular angel stories of the past century happened in a gruesome Nazi prison camp in the Second World War, as told by Corey Ten Boom, a prisoner, and yet is the title of the book. She and her sister, Betsy, had just arrived at Ravensbrook, where new, where new prisoners were being searched Corey was hiding a Bible under her dress. She says, It did bulge out, obviously, through my dress, but I prayed, Lord, cause now thine angels to surround me, and let them not be transparent today, for the guards must not see me. 
I felt perfectly at ease. Calmly, I passed the guards. Everyone was checked from the front, the sides, the back. Not a bulge escaped the eyes of the guard. The woman just in front of me had hidden a woolen vest under her dress. It was taken from her. They let me pass, for they did not see me. Betsy, right behind me, was searched. <clears throat> but outside awaited another danger. On each side of the door were women who looked everyone over for a second time. They felt over the body of each one who passed. I knew they would not see me, for the angels were still surrounding me. I was not even surprised when they passed me by. But within me rose the jubilant cry, O oh Lord, if thou dost so answer prayer, I can face even Ravensbrook, Ravensbrook unafraid. Christianity Today reported the story of angelic intervention, intervention told by the editor of Leadership, a magazine for church leaders. One night, the editor's young daughter was in a coma and near death. A hospital staff worker looked into the girl's room and witnessed an astonishing sight. Angels were hovering over the girl's bed. Amazingly, the following morning, the daughter had recovered. Her father, a man not prone to sensationalism, did not hesitate to believe angels had truly visited his daughter. Meanwhile, the hospital worker renewed her commitment to God as a result of what she had seen in the girl's room that night. Anyway, the stories go on and on in here. They're wonderful. They're thrilling stories. So if you're interested in that, I recommend David Jeremiah's book on angels. Let's take a look back at our booklet and uh, as I was going through it with you, uh, let's, because the way they introduce it is no doubt way better than I can ever do. So let's turn in your booklet to the very front page. Getting the most out of angels, it's called. So it's not really the very first page, it's what, the fifth page or sixth page uh, in the front of your booklet. Looks like this, getting the most out of angels. <clears throat> Would someone like to read the first paragraph for me? In the unseen realms. Uh, Rich, thank you. In the unseen realms of God's universe, powerful and wonderful beings dwell. They move at the speed of light to carry out their master's will. <coughs> Is there a war going on right now between good and evil? All the time. All the time. If you read the book of Daniel, you'll come across the story where Daniel is praying and praying and praying and you know his interaction with uh, God and, and angels and so on had to be am amazing, right? It's, it's Daniel and the lion's den and all that, right? The fiery furnace and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he's praying and praying and praying. He's getting nothing. And finally the angel comes to him and, and says, well, we, we've, Daniel, we've heard your prayers. 
from the beginning, but we know that it's been, I've forgotten the length of time. It's like a week or two weeks or 10 days or something like that. <clears throat> and the angel says, we heard your prayers, but we've been, in essence, battling the prince of Persia. In other words, demons, the demons that are in controlling Persia. We've been battling the prince of Persia, and finally Michael came and helped me, and now I can come to you. Any good thing that's happening on earth now any good thing is because God and the angels are helping to protect us. Primarily the Holy Spirit is what keeps you safe, okay? <clears throat> let's, let's read on. Would someone read the second paragraph for me? Barbara, thank you. I'll read the next paragraph. And when you go to the Bible, you won't be disappointed. 34 of the Bible's 66 books talk about angels in detail. Every New Testament writer confirms their existence. The word angel occurs more than 250 times in Scripture. This is certainly no isolated truth hidden in the dark corners of the Bible. Jesus himself referred to angels as real beings who were involved in every realm of human activity. So, if you have thought that angels belong in the same category as sea monsters and trolls, think again. The Bible also makes it clear that angels fall into two distinct groups, the holy angels of God and the evil angels who followed Satan in his rebellion. Most New Age angel guides ignore that aspect of God's truth. What they don't tell you is that the angel you get in touch with may be out to destroy you. The best protection we have against the deception of Satan is a firm knowledge of God's word. What keeps you safe from demonic activity? What? Our faith in God. Your faith in God? What, what resides in you? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. <clears throat> in order for <clears throat> Satan or demons to have an effect on you, you have to open the door for it. Okay. Hence, <clears throat> You know, the evil that goes on in the world, whether it be drug use, for example, you can open the door, right, to not good things, correct? You don't open the door, you're in good shape. So keep that in mind. I'm going to skip ahead here. So, are there millions of angels? Well, Revelation tells us so, and I, I'm gonna, I would have you read that, but it's in Revelation that tells us about that. Uh, Revelation 5, 11, and 12 is where you want to look for thousands and millions of angels there are, okay? Now, they got a lot of work to do, angels do. So, are there categories of them? You know two categories, don't you, of angels? Can you name one category? Archangels. Archangels is one. Archangels. 
who is in 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 art these are chubby cherubim right chair <laughs> don't rely on the art stuff okay <laughs> and seraphim right do you, you, you ever hear of thomas aquinas cindy has right yes. thomas aquinas who's he do you know <coughs> Yes, medieval theologian that says our Bible expert there. Very, very good. That's excellent. Yeah, about, I think he died in 1274 A.D., so it's 13th century. You always number your centuries one more than the original number. Like, so if he dies in 1274, what's the century he lived in? 13th. 13th. Right. Tim was born in 1944. What century was he born in? 20th. That's how that works, by the way. Any rate, so Thomas Aquinas, the genius that he was, somewhere around 1250, give or take some years, <clears throat> says there are nine categories of angels. There they are, seraphim, cherubim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities. Here you are, archangels and angels. If you have seen or think you've experienced an angel ex uh, time, <clears throat> which ones you've probably come across if you've experienced one? This is from top to bottom according Thomas Aquinas. That group, probably. <clears throat> probably Satan was a cherubim. Was he good? Yep. Is he not now? Yep. Did a third of this group go with Satan when he rebelled? They're fallen. Yep. They're fallen angels. That's correct. So, are all of these good? Well, a third of them are demons. It's eye opening, isn't it? So, understand, and I, I'm reading this, I, I need to stop. I'm reading this in here too. Um, there's work to be done. The whole cosmos is God's. There's all kinds of stuff to be done here on earth, but beyond earth. Okay? That's what angels do. And when you and I die and we're with God, what do you think? Are you just going to sit around with your harp? Is that what he's planned for you? No. There'll be tons to do. I need to stop. I'm run over and I didn't even know it. Homework. Session, section, session one of your study guide is bow our heads for a word of prayer. <sighs> oh, dear Lord, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the, the materials that allow us to think more carefully about you and the, the wonderful gifts that you have provided for us in the form of, uh, of angels. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that resides within us, oh, Lord. Forgive us for how we goof up, how, how, how we, we fall short, O oh Lord. But please, forgive us, use us to make a difference for you in this world. Make this church a beacon on a hill for not only the Stroudsburg area, but for the entire state and world, O oh Lord. So bring us back together again next week, O oh Lord. Uh, keep us safe. Help those people who need help. 
that both we know and that we don't know. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. I, I appreciate that. No. Fascinating. I, I hope. I hope you'll find it interesting and, and fun to do.